Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. In this video, I will test the five most common bed leveling sensors in the market for 3D printers. The first group will be the BL Touch and its variants, including the original BL Touch, a super cheap knockoff called the 3D Touch, and another BL Touch style design from Creality, the CR Touch. I won't call it a knockoff yet, as a knockoff is usually cheaper in terms of price and quality. We also have the non BL Touch group, including another sensor from Creality, the built in strain gauge that came with the CR6SE and the latest CR10 Smart, and finally the Prusa Super Pinda, which is an inductive sensor. I will compare them side by side and see which is the best auto bed leveling sensor for 3D printers. Let's get started. First, I will start with the most popular BL Touch, which is good to use as our baseline. I have five different printers using a BL Touch. I'm quite happy with it most of the time. And I'm going to use the CR Tennis Pro V2, which came with the BL Touch for testing. Since this printer is connected with Octopi, I will use a terminal to send the G28 command to home the printer. Then, send G29 for auto bed leveling. Since the CR Tennis Pro V2 has a 310 by 320 print bed, it's going to probe 25 points. The stock firmware was tweaked pretty well, and it will take around 2 minutes. Then, I will copy the data from the Octopi terminal and save it to a text editor. After I probe 5 rounds and copy 5 sets of data, I will format the text file in a comma-separated format, save it as a CSV file, and open it in Excel. As you can see, the probe data of all 5 rounds are here. As it probes the bed 25 points per round, I will calculate the standard deviation of each point and find the accuracy in average. I will use the built-in Excel formula to find the deviation. We need to select 5 cells that represent the same point of the bed. I will copy this cell to all 25 points. Then, I will average all these standard deviations and come up with an accuracy of 0.0027 mm. Let's keep the result here. The accuracy of the original BL Touch is 0.0027 mm, which is 1.35% if we print at a 0.2 mm layer height. I think this is a very high accuracy, it's even higher than what they claimed. Since my Prusa is also connected to Octopi, I will use the same terminal to send the auto bed leveling command. For Prusa, it uses G80. The Super Pinda sensor works super quickly. I set it to probe 7 by 7 which is 49 points on the bed, and it will only take 1 minute to complete. Since it won't return the result to the terminal by default, I will send another G81 to retrieve it. I will repeat the same thing to get the result of all 5 rounds in Excel. Use the same formula to get the standard deviation of the first point. Then, copy it to all 49 cells that represent the 49 points on the bed, and we get an average of 0.00225 mm. It's around 1.12% if we print at a 0.2 layer height. It seems like it works slightly better than the BL Touch, and the speed is also much faster. It usually probes 5 to 6 times on each point, which is the huge advantage of an inductive sensor. The downside is it can't work on a glass bed, but it would be much better to have a PEI sheet anyways. Next, we will test the 3D Touch without a brand. I have it installed on an Ender 3, and I also have a video to show you how to install the sensor and do some firmware tweaking on this printer. I will set it to probe 16 points, and after 5 rounds, we have all the data in Excel. We have an average of 0.0104 mm, which is not as good as the BL Touch and Prusa Super Pinda, but considering its price, a 5% accuracy with 0.2 mm layer height is still very usable. You basically can't tell the difference from the print if the difference of the first layer is 0.01 mm. Next, it's time for the CR Touch. Some may say this is another BL Touch knockoff. I would say it's a well-designed knockoff, at least in appearance. 
I really like the black plastic case and the metal pin, but the most important part is how accurate it is. Since I didn't connect Octopi to my Ender 5, I will just use a USB cable to connect it to my computer and use Prompter Face to get the data. One thing I notice is that the metal pin is retracting slower than the BL Touch or the 3D Touch's plastic pin. Since the Z axis only stops when the pin is fully retracted, I'm not sure if this will affect the accuracy. Let it finish all five rounds and we will see the result. We came up with an average of 0.021 millimeters, which is quite disappointing because it is even worse than the 3D touch. It would equal to 10.5% in terms of a 0.2 millimeter first layer height. I don't really believe this result as the Sear Touch costs a few dollars more than the original BL Touch. I think the main cause is the heavier metal pin. The retraction speed is not very consistent, and as you can see, at some point it retracted faster. At another point, I can also see some delay. But for now, I will just move on and test the CR6SE strain gauge. My CR6SE has been upgraded to the community firmware, which was made by a group of consumers. Since the stock firmware has some issues, I have another video that covers all the details. After upgrading to the community firmware, it actually works pretty nicely. The strain gauge is installed inside the hot end assembly, so it uses the nozzle to press on the print bed and lets the strain gauge sense the pressure. After all five rounds are done, we came up with an average of 0.0184 millimeters, which is around 9.2% in terms of a 0.2 millimeter first layer height. Okay, here are the results. As we expected, the Prusa Super Pinda works the best in terms of speed and accuracy, followed by the original BL Touch. Surprisingly, the unbranded knockoff 3D Touch is not the worst. It is still better than the Creality CR Touch and the strain gauge. Personally, I am quite happy with the CR Touch appearance. I will give it a second chance, and I will swap it to the Ender 3, which we use to test the 3D Touch and see if it can get a better result. Another reason is that my Ender 5 used a DIY extension cable made by some DuPont connectors to connect the bed leveling sensor. It may have some negative effects on the voltage, so I will move it to the Ender 3. As you can see, the retraction speed of the metal pin is still slower compared to the BL or 3D Touch, and it is also not very consistent at some points. Anyways, we will let it finish all five rounds and look at the data. This time, we ended up with a slightly better result, which is 0.015 millimeters, or around 7.5% on a 0.2 first layer. I will update the result to 0.015 millimeters and 7.5%. Now, its ranking is better than the CR6SE strain gauge, but it is still not as good as other sensors. In conclusion, the Prusa Super Pinda is the winner. The price of this sensor is only $26 from Prusa's official website. If you already have a Prusa, you already have the best leveling sensor. If you have a printer without a leveling sensor and want one, the BL Touch can also deliver a similar performance. The price of an original BL Touch is around $38, which is pretty reasonable. If you want the cheapest option, the 3D Touch isn't bad at all. It's cheap and still works pretty well. The cheapest one I found was on eBay for $9.99 plus $3 shipping from Los Angeles. For the CR Touch and the strain gauge on the CR6SE and the CR10 Smart, their accuracy was not as good as the other sensors, but 0.015 or 0.018 millimeters is only noticeable under a microscope. If you already have a Creality printer like a CR6SE or a CR10 Smart that came with a strain gauge sensor, you don't have to upgrade it. It's totally fine. It's just a bit shy on paper. Honestly, I did expect more from the CR Touch, as it costs a few dollars more than the BL Touch. What I expected was for it to have the same accuracy with an improved design, but it's not. It's supposed to be a good product, and it has the best appearance of all BL Touch variants. I really like the all black design. The cable connector was moved from the side to the top. 
compared to the original BL Touch, it's pretty convenient. Please keep in mind that I have only bought and tested one CR Touch sensor. There is a chance it is just a defective item, as the pin retraction speed of the sensor was not quite consistent. I think that's the main cause of the issue, and the results may not be the same with other CR Touch sensors. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.